let's talk about the AFC South, your favorite, the Houston Texans. And BetMGM makes them an odds-on favorite. Minus 105, the win total, depending where you go. It's either juice over 9.5 or juice under 10.5 for Houston. Second favorite, it's Jacksonville. 3-1, to one, win total 8.5. Same win total for Indianapolis. A little better price on the division at plus 340. And the long shot, no surprise, Tennessee Titans come in. 10-1 to one to win the division, win total of 6.5. Sam, the Houston Texans are 16 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. That puts them seventh in the league. CJ Stroud is 10 to 1 to win the MVP. He's about the third or fourth favorite, depending where you want to go. Um, Bet MGM has them 10 to 1. Right after Joe Burrow. Burrow's 9 to 1. Stroud is 10 to 1. Some names that have uh, longer odds are Jordan Love. For two-time MVP winner Lamar Jackson than C.J. Stroud. There it is. It's this easy, right? Year two, take off. Just crown them. I mean, win the division, win 13, 14 games, win the Super Bowl. It's easy. Let me again read yep. the list of the quarterbacks that Houston's going to play this year because it is a quarterback league. You play good quarterbacks, you're probably not going to be that successful. In the non-divisional games, I'm going to read this list. Josh Allen, Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers, Jared Goff, Dak, Tua, Mahomes, Lamar. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Assuming most of those guys stay healthy, this schedule goes from the third easiest to the seventh toughest. They play a handful of primetime games. And now, Joe, I know that you know people don't think about this type of stuff, but there are 15 games of film on C.J. Stroud. He's not sneaking up on anybody. People are going to know how to attack him, how to cover him. Do we drop? Do we blitz? It is going to be a different ball game this year. And when you go from the hunter to the hunted, it's different in the NFL. BetMGM gave me plus 165. I bet it here in Massachusetts. Plus 165 to miss the playoffs. That has come down a bit, but I think they're going to have a much, much tougher draw this year. Yeah, no, that's legitimate. And don't forget, Jacksonville was eight and three. Eight and three heading into week number 13. Eight and three after beating the Texans on the road. So then they have their collapse. You know, there was some injury stuff going on with, with Trevor Lawrence at the very end. The Jaguars completely fall apart. We're talking about the Houston Texans, not not we, but most are talking about the Houston Texans like they won 12, 13 games. It was really, really good. It was unexpected for all of those rookies, including Will Anderson on the defensive side, um, for him to take off that quickly and what D'Amico Ryans was able to do. But it's like, okay, life is going to change now a little bit with this much tougher schedule that you're going to be facing. And you just went over the change of quarterback and how much more challenging it's going to be. I mean, you go – through their first six, seven games are favored in all of them. Not not massive point spreads, but that's the expectation now. Now, now Houston's going to take that next step, but uh, it's going to be much, much different. The mailman yesterday is dropping off the yes. mail. He goes, oh, I kind of like Houston this year. I'm like, yeah, of course you do. You know, like everybody know. that knows everything about football likes Houston. That is usually a team you want to avoid. And remember, Joe, this Houston win total around the draft was nine. Now it's nine and a half, and it's minus 140, minus 150 to go over nine and a half. They got to win yeah. 10 this year against the seventh toughest schedule in the NFL. I will say, everything that we're talking about is not a surprise to Houston. This is stuff that this organization is talking about. They're not a dumb organization. You know, they got rid of a, a couple bad apples inside that organization. All of a sudden, you see a lot of success. And, and I say it's no surprise to them. Because they went out and they added Stefan Diggs. Like, okay, maybe things can change here. We're not going to depend on a ton from you. We've got Tank Dell, Nico Collins, and Diggs. We just need you to be productive. Like, look, you're not going to be the heavy workload guy that you've been in the past. But we just need you to help us out. And you get to play with C.J. Stroud, and he was all in. They added Daniil Hunter as a pass rusher. 
Like you pair him with Will Anderson, that's kind of scary. So they did make uh, improvements to this roster. They, they know that it's going to be a lot tougher and there's a target on their back. But uh, yeah, the, the hype is a little crazy for the Houston Texans right now. I mean, just for him to be one of the favorites for MVP, them to be up there as far as the top seven, top 18, and all of the NFL fellow ready for the Super Bowl, that seems to be a bit much. You know, oh, just overall taking a step back, Sam, I like the whole division. And what I mean by that is a couple of years ago, we would laugh at the crappy AFC South. I saw improvements across the board. I think Indianapolis hit on their head coach play caller and Shane Steichen. The Jaguars, they're improving the roster. They made some changes in the positive direction. I think the Titans are going to be better than many people uh, were expecting after they moved on from Vrabel. Yeah, Titans win total. Some sharp guys came in, bet over six and a half. I agree with that move. I didn't bet it, but I agree with it. That's a team that has really done a good job at drafting and developing offensive linemen. You have to have line play if you're going to do well in the NFL. And I think that their ceiling this year could be eight wins. I don't know that it's nine or ten, but you you only Mm -hmm. need seven to get over six and a half. And I think the Titans will be a a play-on team a lot in my contest. Like, you get five every week against the number, I'll probably be playing the Titans a lot. Uh, one more quick point on Houston, because I've been kind of you know, shorting them all week on this show. It was a big deal, and you brought this up yesterday with Detroit, to bring back their offensive coordinator. Because Johnson in Detroit and Bobby Slowick in Houston were the two hottest names on the market. Because every time an offense shows you a lot, the coordinators get poached. They go somewhere else to become a head coach. Houston kept Bobby Slowick. Detroit kept Johnson. Those are huge deals for those attacks. And that has to be obviously put into the pressure cooker and and sort of talked about as well. I can give you their schedule. I can expect regression. But they kept basically the entire offense, added Diggs, who, let's be real, has been kind of a diva in a couple different cities now. Now, He flamed out in Minnesota, and he, he turned on Josh Allen in Buffalo. He needs to keep it together and keep his head on straight. But everything that they did last year offensively should be enhanced this year because everybody's back. Yeah, he was not used in the second half. Once Joe Brady became the offensive coordinator for the Bills, look at his game log. He was not used. They went much more run heavy. There there were were problems behind the scenes even before the season got going in Buffalo. So winning situation, maybe that goes away a little bit. But guess what? Josh Allen is a winning situation. It was a winning situation with the Bills. They were considered a Super Bowl contender, so that would concern me a little bit, but who knows? Sometimes uh, the new situation ends up helping players. I want to go back to the Titans for a minute. They made my top five win totals uh, on our power rankings yesterday as far as bets. I'm on the over as well. They did really struggle on the road. They move on from Vrabel. We know the offensive line has been a problem in a bad sense for the Tennessee Titans for a number of years, and they've attacked it, attacked it with high draft picks. Skaronsky a couple of years ago, Latham this past season, and then you bring in the family with Callahan that just fixes offensive lines. And Levis, I think he'll be all right. He'll be all right. We'll, we'll see a jump in play uh, from him. And they added a, a Ridley as well. So, you know, with D-Hop, I think they're going to be all right. They're, they're going to end up – it's going to – look foreign to a lot of us because I'm expecting them to pass the ball when they've just grinded it out with the run game for a number of years. So I do like the Tennessee Titans. I think the interesting conversation here, Sam, is, okay, if you're not back in the Texans, Titans have to do too much in one year to win the division. So that means you're backing Jacksonville or Indianapolis. And this is this is the where I've been stuck throughout the offseason. I really did go back and forth between these two teams for a while. How about you? Indy. Easy. Indy. Me too. That's where Stankin. I landed. Richards. That's where I landed. Their line, yep. Quentin Nelson might be their fourth best lineman. If you go back and look through a lot of the advanced metrics and the pro football focus and all that, Quentin Nelson's a very good lineman. Quentin Nelson mm-hmm. was their third or fourth best lineman last year. That's scary for that division. They are very, very good in the trenches. I like Steichen a lot. Remember, he was sort of the key to that Philly offense that went to the Super Bowl. He left. Jonathan Gannon was the defensive coordinator. He went to Arizona. 
So Sirianni was really searching for stuff the last couple of years without those guys. Steichen is super sharp, and they're going to run a lot of Richardson inside the five. They're, they're trying to use him a lot like Carolina used Cam Newton early in his career. Get out of his way. You know, make the hole, get out of his way, let him go. That's going to be a very efficient offense as long as he can stay on the field and protect the football. Week one, Houston at Indy. We're out to Colts. two and a half. Is I it going told to you, three? Colts. Is it going to three? Uh, if it goes to three, it's coming back. So if you can get a three and you see it pop on the screen, grab the three because it probably doesn't close three. And we talked about this the other day. How about that Colts teaser week one? Two and a half yeah. to eight and a half. Through the three, through the seven, through the eight. Yep. There's still some one and a half, but it's mostly two and a half out there. I'm not surprised by that at all. I'm not surprised. And we know what the public side's going to do that week. And I don't know that they're going to move it based on public. They probably won't. But, wait, Texans? Less than a field goal? I bet to get to bet on C.J. Stroud. Yes, it's a divisional matchup on the road. Yeah, I'll Let's be on the Colts. Col- Who's head Col- of Col- my in week one? I was going to say, am I taking C.J. Stroud or (laughs) Caleb Williams' head week one? I'll decide. Woo!